just in time to get comet stacking. Welcome to SETI Astro. If you don't have the newest version yet, head over to SETIAstro.com under Astro Program, SETI Astro Suite Pro. And you can go ahead and uh, download it here from the GitHub or the Mir site, which is a uh, Google Drive. So lots of updates going on in SETI Astro Suite Pro, but specifically under Stacking Suite now, we have uh, Comet Stacking. Uh, there's, there's some options for this. Uh, you'll see a little checkbox here to create the Comet Stack. That's going to be the Comet Aligned one. Uh, there's also in the Wrench, you have the option to remove the stars. Uh, for the common align stack, which will help uh, greatly minimize uh, those streaks that form when you're doing a, a common align stack. You have the option of using either Starnet or Cosmic Clarity Dark Star. And then you're also going to need a uh, protection around the core so the, so the core doesn't get removed like it was a star. So uh, there's an option there for how big you want that to be. And then there's some uh, adjustable parameters down here at the bottom for the high clip percentile tuning, which um, is used to kind of aggressively clip everything that's not Comet uh, because we're usually dealing with a smaller number of frames to stack. There's moving stuff in the frames. The traditional like Windsor Eyes Sigma and stuff is really, really great if things are static and you're really just getting rid of noise and stuff. But for these uh, more dynamic images, you're gonna just need a harder hitter to try to clean up some of that. So you have both a sigma level and a percentile level. You're gonna to wanna to keep those aggressive, 0.1 to one somewhere in there for the sigma, and then the percentile you're gonna to wanna to keep low. I have it all the way down to 20. Uh, typical range is like 30 to 50. So let's go ahead and just do the, the, full, the full deal. We're going to remove the background gradients. We're gonna remove the stars the whole shebang. Let's go ahead and load our light files. So I have a whole bunch of uh, light files here, LRGB. I have I got them from a Discord user, gracious enough to send me some of his uh, Comet stacks. So I'm just gonna open them. And then what you're gonna wanna do is click uh, Pick Comet Center. If you don't and click Register, it's gonna open up right away for you anyways. But clicking this is gonna pull up a quick preview. You can click Enable Auto Stretch. Uh, there's a one-to-one -one zoom, a zoom in button, or the control mouse wheel works too. What you're going to want to do is zoom right up in on that comet and uh, give it the initial seed. Now this is going to be the initial seed value. It's going to auto detect how the comet moves frame to frame to frame. Uh, and it's going to give us an option here to review that and change it if we need to. But I'm just going to click OK for now and click register and integrate images it's going to start doing the normal stacking registration. It's going to measure all the frames, pick a reference frame, stack them all uh, for the particular group, and then it's going to measure the comet position in each of those frames and do a common alignment, give us a user interface to adjust those alignments if we need to, and then run into things like removing the stars, stacking the comet only image, doing a blended image for us, all that, so I'm gonna let this run and we'll be back when uh, the next step happens. All right, the next thing that'll pop up after you're gonna see it, it does all the matching down here. So it's going to try to follow the comet and that's what all these lines are here. You're gonna get this screen here and it has gamma, which just adjusts the contrast in here, blur so you can help discern against uh, background stars and a zoom. But what we're looking for here, and you can turn the gamma on and off um, to see the linear or just a, just a hard stretch, but you just wanna make sure, and you can click through these, that as the comet moves along, it's following the, the center appropriately. And it is, it does an amazing job at actually following and tracking the comet. So if you just wanna click okay right away, you can. But you know, this gives you an opportunity to make sure it's actually following the comet. And then if you need to move this little circle, just click, click anywhere on this image and it's gonna move that circle there, see? So 
I'm going to want to put it right back to where it needed to go. And then even if you do move the circle and you click auto, it's going to run its algorithm and recenter that circle exactly on the comet's uh, bright point on right on right on the right on the comet's halo's bright point right in the middle right on the core. And then just click okay. And now it's going to move into the next step. If you do have comet star removal enabled, now this is where it's going to actually go through and remove the stars from each subframe uh, prior to doing the comet stack. If you don't have this enabled, it's just going to start stacking immediately. But I have it on, so it's going to run, in this case, StarNet on each subframe prior to doing the comet stack to give it a cleaner image. If you don't have a good GPU, this could take a little bit if you're just running on CPU. So fair warning to those that just have a CPU, if you're removing the stars on every single subframe, it's going to take a hot minute. But I'll be back when this is done on mine. All right, it actually finished that comet only stack and the normal stack, and then it moved on to the next, then it moved on to the next filter. It did that complete normal integration, and now it's having us check the uh, comet centroids again for the next filter. Now, if you only put in one round of filters, like for OSC or whatever, you, you'll you'll be done. But I have a couple more groups to get through, so I'm just gonna click OK and let it uh, keep rolling here, and I'll be back when it's all done. And here's just a little halfway point, it finished removing the stars, and now it's doing the, the tile integration for the, the starless image for the, the comments, and then it's gonna move on to the next group, integrate the normal version, and then pull up the, the comet version to, to check the centroids and stuff like that. And we're done. So now you can see that all the groups B, G, L, and R are complete. And it says that they've all been stacked down here. So let's, uh, let's look at them and I'll show you what you get now. Okay, you're gonna see three images for each. There's the master light, which is a, the normal way of stacking. Then there's a comet only stack. And in my case, I did all the star removal first and then did the comet stack. And then there's also a blend. The blend is just a, it's just a basic screen to help give you an idea of maybe post-processing how your image can look. So I'm going to go ahead and just open all three of these. Um, I'll use the luminous ones to show you guys here. So now we have our three different images. This is the comet only. And there's still some um, streaking. That's just because StarNet doesn't completely remove, you know, the, the halos and the background stars, but it is substantially more reduced than if there were um, stars still in there. There's the normal one, and this is what happens when you just stack it together with a, with a really hard rejection. So some of the coma is still there because those pixels overlap, right? So they, they don't get rejected. So you still get a little bit of coma right in the center. And then here's the, here's the blend it came up with. Again, this is just a little um, screen of them all depending on you know how many you had in the stack how clean your data was this may or may not be um, you know up to your processing standards but it should give you an idea of kind of what the end kind of blending should should be able to do for you now in this case I had RG and B data so this is just the the normal stacks of RGB combined and you could see the the comments almost completely gone from the stack which is what you would expect when you're um, just doing the normal stack. So now let's go ahead and look at the comet only. And now here's our RGB data of just the comet only, just the, the comet stacks RGB combined. Here's our comet and the tail going off. And uh, the stars are highly suppressed because we had them removed. And really this is just the, the residual bits of the, of the trails. So now it's a matter of um, combining these two images and uh, you know, getting getting a result that you'd like out of a comet stacking is always difficult because you're dealing with some of these streaks and a few other things in there. But um, I'm hoping the stacking process itself now is nice and easy for you. It finds the comet centroids. It does all the hard work. It'll even remove the stars from the subframes if you want it to. To really try to give you the best case scenario on getting your data together. And let's not forget. You have layers in SETI Astro Suite now as well, and even doing something like um, dropping the layer over here and doing a quick screen can give you a, a pretty quick idea of how the two are going to blend together uh, as of right now, you know, with, with just minimal effort. 
Now in this case, we're probably gonna actually wanna suppress that residual bit in the middle. Uh, so, you know, we can go through some quick processing steps here. So I removed the stars from the, the normal stack and now we can see that residual core. Now we can go ahead and do something like a blemish blaster and just get rid of this uh, central bit of the core that was left over. Hey, let me guys know if you want a full uh, comet processing video after this. Well, I don't want this to be a full uh, comet processing video. I did clean up the uh, star normal stack. I, I ended up like removing the stars and then just using blemish blasters there in the middle. And then on the comet only itself, ended up uh, masking the comet out and then using convolution to, to blur the background to get rid of all those streaks. And now that we have it like that, I can go ahead and just use layers and, and screen them together. So I'm just gonna drop this over onto my layers pane and I wanna do screening, and there we go. Here's our, our, our comet stacked image now. Um, this is still back when um, A6 was fairly dim, but we got a nice resolved comet core now. We got the nice tail coming off here. Stars are where they need to be, and, and the comet is good. So uh, we got rid of all the weird streakiness and the comet streaking and all that. Uh, and this could all be done uh, really well in SAS Pro now with uh, comet stacking. So as this comet continues to brighten, I hope everybody can hop in and just use uh, SETI Astro Suite for comet stacking. It, it makes it really easy. It tracks the comet core for you. Um, so you can get a comet only and a normal stack. And then you can um, even use the blend if you get a good blend directly out of it. Otherwise, do what I did here. Process the two chunks kind of differently with the normal stack and then the, the comet only stack. And uh, see what you can get and uh, how your combinations work for you. So let me know if you use this down in the comments. Please comment, like, and subscribe.